Hi guys, I hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to be solving the Day 9 project in 30 Days of Python. This project, as I'm sure you've read the brief already, is going to be a little bit more complicated. There's a bit more logic going on in here, and we have to understand a bit more what the expected outcome of the code is going to be before we even start coding. Plus, we've got this Loon algorithm that we have to implement, and we have to understand what that is and how it works before we code as well. So if you haven't read the project brief already, do that first. That's linked below in the description of this video. And now I'll quickly talk over it as well. For this project, we should be able to accept a card number from the user, and we have to sort of clean up the input and all that just in case they make a mistake. Then we should validate the card number using the Loon algorithm that is described fully in the uh, project brief linked below. We have to implement the algorithm ourselves. And once we validated the card, we have to say whether it's valid or not. Now, the algorithm is a little bit longer than everything we've done so far. And so there's a few different steps. I recommend that for this video, you have the algorithm beside you. So maybe have this video on half of your screen and the algorithm on the other half to just make sure that you're following along with what we're supposed to do as we go through it. Of course, if you're watching this video as help because you're stuck during the project, only watch up until the point that you don't need help anymore because you're confident in how to continue, and then continue on your own and come back if you need any more help. So the way we start any of these projects is by deciding what the first thing to do is. And we think that in this case, the best thing to do is to ask the user for the card number, first of all, and make sure the input is clean. So how that's going to go is we're going to, first of all, uh, use the input function to get the card number. So we'll say card underscore number is input of please enter a card number. So nothing new here. Do remember to call strip in order to uh, remove any space at the start and at the end, because if we don't do this, then we're going to end up with a problem where we are not going to be able to follow the algorithm very well. So after running this line of code, the user is going to type in their card number, and then we're going to strip any white space, like spaces or tabs, from the start and the end of it. And we're going to end up with a string. It's a good idea at this point to turn this into a list of digits so that it's a little bit easier to work with. So that's what I'm going to do next. We're going to turn this into a list of digits right there. I'm just going to move this a little bit to the right, uh, just so we have a bit more room here. So now we've got a list. At this point, good idea to print this out, double check what we're working with. So if I enter 7354, you can see that we get back a list of strings where each string in the list is its own separate digit. Now, as per the algorithm, we have to find the last digit of the card number, and that is going to be the checking digit that we need to keep separate from the others. So we can use the lists pop method in order to retrieve the last number and simultaneously delete it from the list. So we'll do check digit is equal to card number dot pop. Now we can print the card number and we can print the check digit. Let's run this. And now you can see we end up with seven, three and five in our list and four as the check digit in a separate variable. The next thing we want to do for this algorithm is we want to reverse the card number that is left and in order to be able to then go into the next step. So we'll do card underscore number dot reverse. If you're not familiar with dot reverse or with the reversed function that we can alternatively use, then do check the project brief, again linked in the description because we've got some information there about this. So now that we have our reverse numbers, we need to take the digit at every even index and double it. So for example, even indices are 0, 2, 4, 6, etc. Here in this card number on the right, we've got three numbers. 7 is at index 0, or in the first position. 3 is at index 1. 5 is at index 2, and so on. So 7 and 5 would have to be doubled in this case. And so we're going to go through and double each number. A first step is going to be to go through the numbers and see which ones are in an even index. Uh, so we'll do four digit in card number, 
This is going to allow us to go through the card number list and the digit variable gets created as the first element in the card number list. We're going to run the loop, then the digit becomes the second number, and then we run the loop again and then digit becomes the third number and we run the loop again. Uh, so inside the loop, digit is one of the numbers in the card. Now, how do we check the position of the digit? Well, we can use the enumerate function for that that we learned earlier on. So we can do for index and digit in enumerate of card number. And now we've got both the index and the digit. So if the index and we get the remainder of two is equal to zero, that means the index is an even number. So we can print even. Otherwise, we can print odd. So let's run this making sure to spell things correctly. And you can see that we get even, odd and even for 7, 3 and 5, or rather 5, 3 and 7 once we've reversed the card number. Now we want to keep track of the numbers, making sure that the ones in an even index are doubled and the ones in an odd index are not doubled. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new list of processed digits and that's going to be an empty list initially and into this list we're going to put all the numbers but some will double and some we won't double so if the index is divisible by two then we will say processed digits dot append digit times two but of course remember digit is going to be a string so we need to turn digit into an integer first Otherwise, we want to just append the digit on its own. So we'll say processed digits.append int of digit. Now let's go to the end and print out the processed digits away from the for loop. So here we have 7354. We get the first three digits, or rather we lose the last one. We reverse it, giving us 537. And then we're going to double index 0 and 2, giving us 10, 3, 14. Now, something important about the algorithm is that if this multiplication by 2 results in a number greater than 9, we actually have to subtract 9 from it first. So we have to do a little bit more work. We're going to do doubled digit as a new variable. It's going to be int of digit times 2. And now, instead of simply appending that into the list, we're going to check if double digit is greater than 9. And if it is, we're going to say double digit equal double digit minus 9. And then down here, we're going to append double digit. So what we're doing is simply multiplying it by 2 and then subtracting 9 from it if it is greater than 9, and finally just appending whatever's left. If it wasn't greater than 9, then we are just appending this. And if it was greater than 9, then we're going through here and we're subtracting 9 and then we're appending it anyway. Notice that we don't need an else statement in this if statement because both cases, whether it is greater than 9 or not, will end up in us having to append it anyway. Now, once we've got this, we have ourselves the processed digits. The final step in the algorithm is to add the processed digits to the check digit and see if the amount resultant is divisible by 10. So we're going to get the uh, sum or the total is going to be the int of check digit, which we defined up top as the card number dot pop, which was the last string digit of the card number, plus the sum of processed digits. Sum here is a pretty neat function that we can give it a list of numbers and it will just add them all up for us. And so there we go. Now we can print whether the total is divisible by 10 and that is equal to zero. So this is going to be either true or false depending on the number. And so I'm going to run this. I'm going to enter my card number and you can see it's false. This is not a valid card number. But if we try with a test card number that is actually a valid number, like this one, then we get true. So it was valid. However, printing true or false is not a great experience. So instead, I recommend using an if statement to check this in a bit of a nicer way. We can simply do if the total divisible by 10, then we're going to print valid. Otherwise, we're going to print invalid. 
Now running this and giving it the card number, we get valid. And this is an actual way of testing card numbers. So if you were able to implement all of this, I know it's a bit long, then congratulations, you've done a great job in getting this far. If you started from not knowing any coding at the beginning of the series, and now you're able to code this or at least understand it and sort of be able to work with it, then that's really great progress. We're going to leave a couple additional resources for the blog post as well as the sum function documentation so you can go and check them out if you're interested. But other than that, thank you for joining me. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you again tomorrow for day 10.